You're listening to the Finding Careers End podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and I'm back today with Ricky Baez for a end of the year special. Ricky, how are you? I'm doing great, Pete. What about on your end? I'm doing well. We're, we're we were both out of state and made it back. Um, I was flying, and, and I'm lucky that I avoided just by a day the the collapse of one of the major airlines. It seems oh, like it's a mess, so I, I was able to get back. You got to see some snow in Tennessee, but had to drive back. So that couldn't have been fun. No, no, it was just way, way, way too many stops along the way. Traffic in Atlanta. Dear Atlanta, love your people. Man, your traffic. You got to do something about that. That's, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I drove back. Oh. So we're back. We're back in Florida. And we have one more show, this one yep. that we're doing before 2023 is officially upon us. And we wanted to talk about Make it a wish day, wish list day. So three mm-hmm. things that we each wish um, will we'll continue, something we wish uh, and hope to happen in 2023, and then something we wish would go away. So I don't know what you wrote. You don't know what I wrote. Let's start. Do you want to go first? You know what? I think I'll flip that coin to you, sir. You go first. I'll, I'll go first. So something yeah. that I, I wish and hope will continue um, throughout 2023 and that is the growth of the freelance market and um, also referred to ah. as the gig economy. It is something I'm a huge fan of. Uh, we've talked about this a couple of times on podcasts throughout the year. I think we discussed it a couple of weeks ago when we were on the topic of unions, because to me, it's the polar opposite of um, of that, where uh, I don't believe that uh, someone's career should be a team sport. I think that um, that's what you know, freelance offers is just as the word indicates freedom. And okay. um, it, 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 it makes for a healthier work relationship. I, I could spend hours talking about that. I won't do it because I've done it enough and I'm sure we'll do it more next year, but I see it as all good. I think the government will, um, will probably disagree with that. I think the federal government will, <laughs> Um, throughout this year, unfortunately, become more involved in what's happening there because it um, is growing so rapidly. I think that is um, something I hope doesn't happen, but I expect will. Yeah. I'm a big fan. So what, what do you think about that one? The, the, I'm, I'm sure you agree. You want to see that continue too, right? Oh, absolutely. And 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 I think when we did that episode um, where we did go in depth about it, I think you and I were both the same sheet of music. So I really hope that continues and I want that to grow even more. So I'm with yeah. you on that. So there's there's my there's my first wish for the freelance market to continue to grow. What what say you? What's your first wish? You know, it's uh about to be 2023 there, Pete, and the pandemic is what two three years old now, almost three years old. Yeah. Right. And the uh, even before the pandemic started, we knew what a flexible work arrangement meant. You know, it's remote work, Zoom meetings, Skype meetings, and the pandemic kind of pushed us into it. And now it's become a part of our everyday lives. And I wish for that to continue because that's going to only evolve. The more people get involved with it, the more it evolves and the more we learn from it and the more efficient it's going to be. So I really wish for that technology to continue to be used and embraced. So do you think it will though? I think it will. I think it will. It, it's um, with with um, with how relevant it is right now in the metaverse, the oldest possibilities on Web 3.0. And now it's just discovered um, uh, GTP3 chat. It's 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 this whole big thing now that I really think the more we use it, the the better it's going to be and the more efficient we are going to be and how you and I do this now. So, all right, yeah. so I wasn't planning on, on going down this road, but I have to, if you're the employer yeah. and the flexible work arrangements that you're referring to, and I want to clarify, are, are you talking about working on site versus remotely, or are you talking about, you know, uh, shorter days on a work schedule or, or are you just putting it all in that um, under that umbrella? Two separate things. Um, okay. So I'm talking about the, the option to be able to work from home or from work, not exclusively one or the other. Okay. So I'm a fan of that too. You know, yeah. that we've, we've sent um, our staffing company uh, employees uh, to all work remotely. If they choose, right. they have the option. Um, not shockingly, everyone is choosing to work virtually. Yeah. <laughs> so for, for 90 <laughs> plus figure. percent of the time, which is great. It makes sense. I'm a fan, but it, when you bring up chat GPT, uh, it, it begs the question of, 
if you're a large employer and you have someone who could potentially use that to do their job, let's say a customer service agent, there, there's a there's a, a, a tweet that I saw a couple of days ago where it was showing how to take you know, the chat text, turn that into video. And there's another site that has oh, wow. an, an AI um, person, you know, it looks like a person who will speak the text in the video. So basically you could have um, a, a speech, a video created through, <laughs> through that if you follow a couple steps. So it's not hard to imagine that virtual employees could potentially figure out a way to have chat GPT use their job for them. So I guess my, my question is, could that the existence of that technology work against employees being remote, you know, and working that way? So that's a loaded question. So here we go. All right. I, I, that I was not expecting. No, I, so, well, I, I wasn't expecting to ask it. So there. <laughs> I got it. Well, it, it, <laughs> it, it blew my mind, Pete. I was messing with it and it blew my mind how intuitive it was. And I'm like, these possibilities are endless. So, but, but back to the question I had, um, let's take the ethical piece out of the equation. Right. Ethical meaning, is it cheating or is it plagiarism to put that out there as your own work? But then if you initiate the 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 right levels to make it happen, is that ethical? So let's take that out of the equation for right now. And me as the employer, if I'm paying an employee to do ABC for me and and the employer produces ABC for me and no laws were violated, I don't care where it came from. OK. Right. Because to me, I all I care about is the product that I'm paying to get. And I got oh, I get that. Sure. So, you know, <laughs> you don't care that your employee was just remember, like I put the ethical piece out of it. <laughs> so, no, I mean, I guess, I guess that makes there. sense. I think the you know, the, the, care, the the next logical thought on that is, wow, is this, you know, how many jobs is this going to eliminate? And, you know, for I think for everyone who's listening to this, we, we both I haven't asked you this, but I, I I think I know the answer. You would highly recommend paying attention to what's happening. Stay oh, yeah. ahead of the curve. Well, you may not be ahead of the curve, but stay on the curve of the evolving technology. Because if you look at jobs that exist today that didn't exist 20 years ago, and conversely, jobs that did exist 20 years ago that don't exist today, that um, evolution is speeding up. And th yeah. this is, we've just taken a big <laughs> step forward um, by seeing this AI out in, you know, uh, that everyone can use. Yeah. And um, like you said, it's it's boy, it blows your mind. And now, um, I think you know even even since it was originally launched, I've seen a couple of comments how it has some political bias to it, and you know yeah. the answers are somewhat subjective. And so when you start seeing those things, because my first thought was, man, Google um, is going to be challenged by this, yeah, uh, because it's going to eliminate potentially eliminate so much traffic. But when I saw that it doesn't, didn't provide options, which is exactly what Google does, right? I mean, when you do a Google search, the front page of Google uh, gives you, you know, roughly 10 different options to choose from. Got it. Yep. This is one size fits all, at least in its current form. And, and there was a bunch, um, I saw again on Twitter, a bunch of political questions that were asked. And this thing, well, let's just say was biased. <laughs> well, well, so, well, let me tell you what I did. Let me tell you, because this is, this is, I have not been impressed, this impressed with something like this in a long time, Pete. That's why when I first saw this and how it worked and I tried it out, I'm like, these possibilities are endless. So I asked the GPT-3 chat uh, uh, a box, um, what does a good HR manager do? And it gave me this really intuitive paragraph and bullet points and everything. And I'm like, oh, okay, so you gather data. Let me see you think. And then I asked it, what does a bad HR manager do, uh, do? And it didn't do the exact opposite. It really told a story of how a business would fail if they employed a horrible HR manager. It was really intuitive. And, and I'm not going to lie. It's scary, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> it's really well, scary. <laughs> well, I don't know if you saw my blog. I, I'm, I would hope you have, Ricky, that I interviewed ChatGPT a couple of weeks ago. About, oh, that, um, that, that's recruiting. how I got into it. Yeah. So you'll have <laughs> so, to check that out. Um, yeah. And I, I think it was, again, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's mind blowing to see how, um, how impressive it is. 
However, as someone who knows about staffing, um, it I lacked nuance in its responses. It was sort of generic in nature. So um, I, I think it'll improve over time. I do wonder, mm. you, you said it, when you talked about ethics, and I don't know this, if you ask ChatGPT to create content for you, is it plagiarism to take? Or Because I, I thought at first, unlike Google, which pulls from existing sources, this is being generated on the fly to some degree. Um, is that considered plagiarism? If you, I, I've been pondering that question for a while, Pete, because I'm also a professor. And a few months ago, I was having a conversation with another uh, professor at the same college where I teach. You know, having a conversation about that, not necessarily G, the GPT one, but there is there is students who put like essays or other information in Google Translate translate it to one language and then translate that to another language and do that four or five times at the filter and this come and put it back to <laughs> English is this beautifully put together essay right so the question was is like is that unethical and we don't know we don't know if that's unethical because it's it's they're doing the work but it's not their own intellectual work so we're where, where I'm leaning is, if it's not your own intellectual property, meaning that you did not create it, the words did not come out of your head, then it would be unethical for you to grab what you decided to do with uh, an, an app to have those words come out. I don't so know is Grammarly right. unethical? Oh, there's a good one. Well, I would say for an English student, it would be. Right? If, you, if you're in an... <laughs> This is so off topic. Yeah, but but no, no, yeah, but now I want to know. No, I see. If you're an English so. student who has to write a paper and you use Grammarly, is that is that cheating? I don't think it is cheat. Yeah. And then so, I'll give you one more. And this is about this is more in line with what you were just saying. There's another um tool that that is sort of the next level, which is um called I think it's called oh god, I'm saying Wordle. Is that's not it? It's called um WordTune. And it gives you a variety of options. So you write a sentence, you know, Jack and Joe went up the hill yeah. and it will give you a number of alternate ways to say it that may very well be an improvement on the way you originally stated it. So where do you stop? So, you know, Jack and Jill traveled <laughs> up the mountain, right? Jack and Jill, you know, <laughs> up the hill went Jack and Jill or whatever, right? But it gives you a variety. So if you took your friend's paper and just put it through WordTune, changing every sentence, the teacher would never, I mean, there's no software that could find it, I guess, unless. Yeah, well, I mean. But this is bad. This is, this is, uh, where's this it, leading? So, so, okay. <laughs> right. We, we, we bring that whole, going back to chat GPT, the whole GPT thing. I, I like it. I love it. I think it's going to do great things. I'm going to be afraid to to use it because if I don't come up with the creativity, if I'm not in charge of my own uh, creative process, something else is, what does that do to my own process? I, I, I don't improve. So I rather not use it. I mean, that's our field now, but we'll see how, what, what happens in a couple of years, but I am afraid that it's going to rob away of people's creative process. Well, I think it'll make us better, right? I, I think it forces us to be better. That's, that's my, my wish. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is not one of my three wishes, oh, but, that's but right. I would say we're doing wishes. That's right. <laughs> I, I'm sure if you look back through history, there's lots of things that were thought there. This is going to take away the humans X, right? And yeah. um, in some cases, that's probably the you know, very true where where you know, if you take a look at transportation, right? Humans aren't as fit as they used to be uh, because our food is caught for us. We don't have to grow our own food. We don't have to, to, to walk and, and, and run places. <laughs> we, we, we get to ride in a car. Well, <laughs> we're a lot in worse physical shape in that regard. Right. But, yeah. um, not, not, not everyone, but collectively, uh, but that's been balanced out by other health benefits. So the life, you know, lifespan has extended because instead of spending our time, this is, this is sort of the counter, right? Instead of spending our time hunting our own food and growing our own food and walking from point A to point B, we're able to use our brains a whole lot more, and um, and as a result, create the point. You know, medicines and technologies that'll extend our life. You know, as a as a better trade off than what we were losing. There, there's my philosophical thought for the day. So I hope you've actually that, convinced me <laughs> that Chat GPT 
you know, ultimately makes us better because we're able to spend time not on tasks that can be uh, created by a computer, right? Now, then the, you know, the, the matrix question is, well, where, where does that stop? And let's not, let's not dwell on that today, Ricky. It's a happy show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just wait for the Skynet series. You'll be all right. Okay. So, so next one. Uh, so that's what we wish will happen. You, you, you wish for no, to continue. the continuation. I'm yeah. sorry. That's what we wish to continue. Yeah. Um, flexible work arrangements and for me, the freelance economy. So mm -hmm. what do you, um, what do you hope will happen? Right. What's something you wish would happen that doesn't, that, that doesn't currently look to be the case or isn't I'll, currently taking place. Would you like I'll me to go in. first again? I'll jump in. I'll jump okay. in this one. Cause I don't know if you, I don't know where you are on this one. So I don't know Boy. if you it's if you like yes or absolutely no. Here's what I hope to happen: a larger acceptance of a flexible work week. Oh, that's why you had to separate the two. Yes, okay. <laughs> that's right. I had to separate. Now I know. It. Yeah, a flexible work week. Here we go. Okay. So so here's here's how I look at it, and. I was not under, I was not on this side of that fence up until about two or three months ago when I started seeing like, wow, okay, this really does work. Um, define it though, please D define okay. what you, what you're actually talking about, because that when you say flexible, that could mean so many things. Completely do away with a scheduled Monday through Friday, nine to five position and focus solely on a position to where the value of what the employee puts out is equal or yeah should be equal to what he or she works how they work throughout the week so um whether it takes them 40 hours a week 80 hours a week or five hours a week as long as the output matches the value that you as the boss of the organization is okay with we should be okay wow you so sound like a fan of the freelance economy uh, of course I am. <laughs> so, um, so as we know, in many respects, that's, that's how freelancers get to work. Yep. But I think you'd have to go down the list of job titles and say, which ones this could apply to and which ones can't, because Correct. what is go missing from that is, um, you know, availability and accessibility of people, uh, you know, to interact and, and work together or support customers, um, or support other folks internally, right? I mean, I, it it sounds wonderful. And for many jobs, I think it's possible. But I think for probably, you know, I'm, I'm just making this up because we really would have to go job by job and say, yep, this could work or no. We have no to way. do that by job by job, yeah. But, but I think what you'd find is that I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Do you think that companies, so if we acknowledge, let's say 50% of the jobs you can do it, 50 can't, okay. right? Is that just fair? That, that's fair. That's fair. Let's say you take a big company or even a small company, our company, 30 employees. Let's say you could split it right down the middle. 15 doesn't really matter when they work. Um, and the other 15, you know, have to adhere to a schedule. How much strife does that cause? Well, the strife comes from, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I see that. But wouldn't that be an incentive? Because chances switch are, jobs. The, the, well, no, not switch jobs, be promoted into a job that has that kind of a, uh, of a structure to it. What if it's not a promotion, though? What if it's a job that, um, like, for example, payroll that, that we run has to be run each week for you know, hundreds Correct. of people being a staffing company? Mm -hmm. The person who does that is is someone at our company is someone I, I trust you know, with with my life. Mm -hmm. um, who's our longest tenured employee, you know, mm -hmm. so this is someone she that does a great job. Yeah. I would give as much flexibility to as I possibly could. However, she has to adhere to a certain schedule in that. And so you know, I think it would be, this is, I did not intend to use this <laughs> example, but, but since I did, you know, so here's someone who you know, deserves any advantage and benefit and freedom that they could, you could possibly grant an employee, but isn't, you know, is, is bound by the responsibilities of her job. So if, if, if to, to give, to grant that to other employees, listen, it happens, right? Salespeople make commission, other jobs, you know, roles don't. I mean, that's, you know, some positions get bonuses, others don't, but I would, I, 
I hesitate. I cringe a little bit when you say you'll get promoted into it because I don't necessarily think well, that's would is how it would play out. Well, I mean, obviously, this it's this isn't something that I've been thinking about for years and years. This is something that I was just I started exploring this year. And it's funny you bring up the payroll position because that's I've actually seen this work out live with a payroll position, uh, payroll position recently. And just like any other position. So let's talk about the 50 percent of the position just would apply for right not the other 50 percent. so let's say payroll is one of them so like any other position where this would apply to there are some meetings that we still have to be available for right so not just a hundred percent flexibility but instead of being in a specific office in a specific place from monday to friday nine to five or in a position monday to friday nine to five but just say look i just need you for this meeting and that meeting everything else you do whatever you want to do you go to the doctor you handle this meeting or at least be available for a client so long as goals a b c are hit so right. in this example, this one payroll person has to be available on this day and that day and that time to process payroll. Everything else is whatever they want to do. Here's a world I'd like to live in. <laughs> I'd like to live in a world or work in a world where it's not even necessary to to dictate those things. And, and I suspect that's what you're going for, right? Yes, sir. So the person who's who has to do X on a certain day or time or meet with a certain group in a perfect world and the world we'd like to live in probably is the one who could just acknowledge, you know, realize that and act accordingly and not have to have it spelled out. Um, that's what I've always wanted. It, you know, is to say, why do I have to talk about hours? Right. Do you like <laughs> do, you know, maximize the opportunity for yourself or the organization, do the best job that you can. Um, now we're in a, in a world where, you know, it is um, commission driven. So it makes sense that people would want to do more for that reason. Um, but like you said, there's people who want to get promoted. Um, mm -hmm. And and there's a reason to, to do um, to work harder, you know, that way or to do more right now. That's now we get into quiet quitting a little bit. I, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves here. But that is um, that's an interesting thing. So flexible work schedules where possible. Where, where possible, and obviously this will be in its infancy stages, right? It 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 would have to evolve with time and with practice. But uh, I've seen it work for some organizations, and I'm like, wow, that that actually makes sense. So I'm I'm excited for that. Now, do we do we latch the three or four day work week onto that, or or we keep that separate? No, I think I it's that will be included. That will be included. It, it it's I like how you put it though, Pete. Right? You want to run a company. I don't know about living in the world, but you would want a company with a trust. It's so solid that you don't have to mention any of, of those things. Right. It's, well, it just works. So you, so you realize <laughs> what I'm saying is I want an HR free <laughs> situation, right? Not, That's hilarious. <laughs> but I mean, really, if you think about it, if like, what are all the things that HR is in place to do in a perfect world? Would you agree with this? I'm putting you on the spot. No, oh, no, because I, Go ahead. Would Go you ahead. say that these functions are shouldn't? It's a shame that they're necessary. I'm I'm saying they are necessary, but I'm saying if if you go kind of through a lot of the um the things, you think, man, wouldn't it wouldn't it be nice to not have some of these functions be required? So I'm gonna get. So you're asking a very progressive HR person this question. So okay. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna answer it in a progressive manner, and it will be just like this: if HR did its job at bringing in the perfect talent for the perfect position with great leadership. Nothing else in HR is necessary. All right, I'm going to go. So let me just jump in and go the opposite way of what okay. I said. <laughs> There's no way that anyone could accomplish that. Um, period, right? So there's no, no matter what you do with people, you're not going to accomplish that. Therefore, it's an impossible scenario. Mm -hmm. You can't hire perfectly. No, you can't. Right. Oh, so you, you, you can't, but you can hire you. You cannot hire perfectly, but you can have a really dang good match from a candidate to a position. 
right? So if 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 you if HR is strategic enough to partner with the business leaders and convince them to have a really good process on who to bring in when, what kind of person to bring in when, um, with the future in mind, not the right now, but the future in mind, then that is a strategic partnership that's progressive versus right now where some HR just focuses, just hang out until something happens in employee relations. <laughs> you know, even even the best businesses, you know, look at Disney and sort of the public uh, um, things that they went through in the past few months with their CEO being replaced by the former yeah. CEO. And then there was an article written about why that happened and how it came to be. Not sure how much of it is, is true. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you read the article, but I but sure did. It was, you know, here's this organization that is, is, um, you know, is the top of, of, you know, admired companies and, and rightfully so it's incredibly successful and massive employer and brand. And yet you, you kind of look and say, there's still a disorganized mess at some levels. And I think that is something that employees probably don't realize as much as they should is that, you know, the companies just are a mess <laughs> in many respects. Like even, even though there, there's highly intelligent people involved and, and they have incredible decision making and experience and tools and processes, no, it's still it's still people who are going to make mistakes and, and get things really wrong. Yeah. You know, Elon's doing it publicly every day right now with Twitter, <laughs> right? Yeah. He'll make a decision and 24 hours later reverse it after getting bashed. I mean, so it's HR will be ever. always be necessary. You're safe, Ricky. You're you're safe from AI. <laughs> I think that's. Oh, no, give it time. Give, give, give it time. I'm pretty sure it's going to evolve with time. But, you know, Pete, it, it, it's it's hearing you say that and then, you know, knowing what I've got, I've gone through with with uh, with with human resources and what the future future is going to look like that right there is that difference, though. It's that it's that strategic partnership. So, yeah, you're right. I'm safe from AI for right now. Wait until it starts evolving. And then let's see what happens. But I just, I just think it's so hard for companies to plan. That's all. You know, yeah, is it, I'm with you. Is, is even the best ones. And you know, just looking at, like you said, the just kind of um, there was a mess going on behind the scenes. And you think, man, if they can't do it, who can? Yeah, who can really? Who can plan? But Pete, come on, though. The fact that that is the only issue we're seeing, it says it's a real well oiled machine. I mean, people don't know that the mouse who, who the mouse owns. ABC, right? ESPN, um, it's Hulu. I mean, those are a lot of, uh, it's a lot of huge organizations. And for this to be, the, because right now they're just focusing on on what happened with Shapeg with everything else, right? And the streaming service and everything. So well, look at the streaming yeah. service, right? As an example, and look at um, CNN Plus, I think it was that came, yeah. <laughs> it was released and then canceled within a very short time frame. Mm -hmm. I think under 60 days. And I just, uh, we're so off topic, but when you talk about companies planning, um, to me, look, I'm going to step back to say, you know, that I believe that uh, one of the reasons I support the freelance market so strongly is I think we, there's too much of a dependency on uh, employers among the workforce. I, I, I think employers today in many respects are responsible for health and wealth and well-being and mental, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, well-being and it's so much beyond a job when you when you lay those responsibilities on the employer who it's just not like, how that evolved and we talked about unions the other day it's just yeah. how it evolved is irrelevant the fact that it exists today and it, and it isn't necessary um, to exist today I think is is sort of my mission that I want to try to um, bring about with, with the, uh, the, the freelance concept is let's stop expecting so much from each other. Mm. Right? I mean, let's expect <laughs> the job to be done and, and not in, and, and, and be paid, you know, the, the wage that was agreed upon yeah. and man, let that be enough. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Because everything else that you pile onto it just adds complexity and negativity and, 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 and problems that, you know, yeah. where let everyone solve, the rest of it on their own. Anyway, that's my, <laughs> that's my highly unrealistic freelance um, uh, objective that I want to help achieve. So we got we have one more wish, right? And that wish is well. Well, I didn't. I didn't. 
you know, talk about oh. the thing that I hope will happen. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. That's right. I'll do it briefly because everyone wants this, right? Everyone hopes that the economy will turn around, that inflation will decrease, and um, interest rates will go down. So that's, that's what I hope. That's my wish of what I want to happen because if all those things can happen, or at least uh, the majority of, of those things happen, if we can, if businesses can be healthy and the supply chain can be good and, and, um, if we can we can not have out of control inflation, then the, then the job market will 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 be strong and and income will continue to grow and uh, we'll be a good place. And um, you know, that's what I that's what I hope. Okay, happens. so hold on. Yeah, I'm gonna throw one at you. I need a certified Pete Newsom prediction. Give me an ETA. On what? On that. On what? On, on 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 getting back to uh, like the economy, yeah, going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I have no idea. I, I a year, a year. You know, it, the early twenty twenty four. Got it. Yeah, because it, it just seems like there's too many bad signs, right now. I think. See, I think. I don't know. I think because it longer, it, I, all yeah. I really care. I mean, this is all I really care about. But professionally, what I care about is state of the job market. And that's has a long, long way it could drop before it's it's not yeah. strong. So who the heck knows? What do you think? I figured it'd be longer, probably a year and a half or two before it gets to the level that we're going to be good good with. Because I don't think I honestly don't think much of America fully understands why the prices are the way they are right now why everything is the way it is right now. Yeah, it is the political cycle, but there was something else involved in there. And there was this little COVID thing that kind of disrupted everything worldwide. And right now we're paying the piper for that. Have you been reading, reading the Twitter files? That, no, I want to though. I want to, that is on my list. That is on my list. You need so, to. It's that, um, that good. Well, okay. Not right. comforting. Yeah, all right. Right. Um, but go. listen, any, anything, that that brings, <laughs> anything that brings the, the truth to light and uh, that I think is ultimately good. Yeah. For I us. Agree. But uh, yeah, you just, boy, you have some reading to do. You have some catching up. I thought you, you, you kept up with that stuff. No, 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 not with that. Not with that. Towards the end of the year, I'm tend to kind of lay back a little bit, but uh, that is definitely on my list of things to be agitated about. Well, <laughs> let's just say um, th th there's some interesting things, but yeah, I, I look, we, we need, um, we need to get the economy, you know, going in the right direction. I think inflation is, is a tough one um, that prices, everything's so expensive right now. And mm. even though some, kind of government massaging going on with the numbers um whew, we need we i'd like to see that turn around i right, won't turn yeah. around it won't go backwards i'd like to see it just get back better to yeah get, 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 get back to normal before it gets scarier that's right that's what i want i don't want it to be too scary so all right, all right. wish number three all right so we we've talked about what we um hope will continue what we we hope will happen and now what do we wish would go away something you you hope would go away this is a pet peeve so it may not be in any anybody else's list but man let me tell you it really gets under my skin back when i used to do this when i was in the job market looking for a job and i would submit a resume and fill out all this information and they're still asking me to fill out the information that's on my resume oh, i, I submit a resume are you, are you Kind of bashing recruiters here? No, no, not You're recruiters. Getting back to me from the for the HR comment. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, not recruiters. Not recruiters. Just the process. Just the process. Because to me, um, I don't know why. We, I'm. I'll take it back. I know why organizations do this, and you know, it, it's just to be clear. What I'm saying that I don't like is applying for a position, quote unquote, by sending in a resume, putting all this information, you know, it, it just, just that information in. And we still have to spend time filling the different boxes on the application process. I get why that's necessary from an HR point of view, because you want to be able to get the data aggregated and do what needs to be done. Get it. From an end user perspective, I gave you my resume. <laughs> Here you go. What would you do to change it? I mean, how could it change? Is there an easy fix? Yeah. 
Wow. Just just get rid of the application process. Just here's a resume. There is the 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 not websites. I'm sorry. The um, uh, applications out there right now are intuitive enough to parse out information and have almost zero, almost zero error. So why will we still um, uh, put people through the process of entering the, you know, the each and every job and all these other things when it's already on a resume? That's just that's just my pet peeve. Well, I don't know how much we've talked about this in the past, but I think resumes are um, anti an antiquated, outdated tool that hasn't evolved and kept up with, with the rest of the world. I mean, they still are effectively the same as they were 50 years ago, right? How many things can you say that about? And so yeah. Uh, yeah, we don't recruit based on job descriptions and resumes as much as we recruit based on intent and um objectives of the candidate and and you know skills and background for sure but the resume to me is just it, it doesn't tell the right story right it tells it's it's like a cover of a book but i think there's a way where you could get to more of the cliff notes of the book okay. as of an individual if you will um by phrasing things differently by having a different format right that, that a resume doesn't portray this is interesting so you'd rather not have a resume I'd rather have it in a different form. I mean, you can call it a resume still, but but a resume um, that generally speaking lists your jobs and, and what you've done at the jobs doesn't speak to what recruiters need to know. So that that gives you, let's say, the hard skills, right? The resume doesn't speak to the soft skills, yeah. um, which is hard to do on paper, but it also doesn't speak to um, dry, uh, the the motivation and objectives of the individual the way it should, right? Okay. Because it's like, the resume tells me what you've done. I need to know if I'm a recruiter what you want to do and intend to do going forward, and not, not just look past. I, I want to hear your going forward plans and objectives. So, so we're in the same sheet of music. I'm perfectly yeah. okay with that. I'm all I'm advocating for is an easier process for the <laughs> for the candidate. That's yeah, that's I mean that's well, my advocacy here. If if a candidate. I'll, I'll tell you this, the process as I know it is, I believe is that takes time, right? So you'd have to fill out like we, our recruiters fill out a profile on candidates that includes mm -hmm. a lot, answers to a lot of questions that aren't on a resume that you wouldn't see from a resume. But I don't know what the acceptance rate would be of people willing to do that. You just said you don't like having to fill out additional information, right? No one does. I mean, that's not, but it's different when you have someone asking you live and, and interviewing mm -hmm. you, so to speak. Um, not every candidate's willing to spend that kind of time with us and, and that's okay. We don't need to work with everyone just like clients. If, if you, I don't want to recruit based on a, just a generic job description. I want you as a hiring manager to tell me, you know, describe who you need and the job and, and the skills that mm -hmm. are required and it, it just with meaning and not just, you know, checking a box on our, on our job description. So yeah, I think they're both sort of outdated processes, even though they're used 99% of the time. Yeah. And, and, and look, and that information is useful. I mean, I get it from an HR perspective. Um, it, it's, it helps us for it's in HR when the candidate fills all this information out. So, so I can wear those two hats. One, a great example is I have one client that I'm working with right now that uh, was having an issue with specific positions being filled. And when we started taking a deeper dive into that issue, we found out that looking at the applicant tracking system, the at, the uh, the candidate would never get past 20 minutes on the application process would never get past that because it was too cumbersome and too much no time. wonder <laughs> yeah yeah because they died exactly. of old age <laughs> yeah that's why so we're like minutes. Wait, we have an opportunity wait a minute, i'm sorry i want to make sure i understand it. where, where yes. were, could you say where you were working during this no I, <laughs> we, they couldn't figure out and i want to make sure i quote you on this correctly why the candidates wouldn't get past 20 minutes of no, no, the no. application process no 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 that was after we took a deep dive right because at first the person didn't know how, how long to use was that the system. whole thing. What, what, how long would it take? An hour, an yeah. hour, Pete, <laughs> an hour. And That's I'm atrocious. like, that, no, we can't do that. <laughs> we can't. Now, again, from a business perspective, I understand they want to make sure they got the right person. And although I commend that and, and I completely understand that there's a more efficient way to do that. 
right? <laughs> than, than putting the candidate through it. Now, yes, their argument was if anybody goes through that process, they're as serious about this job as we are. My counter to that is if anybody goes through that process is because nobody else wants them. <laughs> Right. Well, <laughs> Nobody else wants them. But even so then, think I mean, about think about that. that, right? That's the kind of statement that um, I think is not surprising, of course. But <laughs> man, that that's where I, I, I immediately now in my head, I go, oh, freelance solves that, right? You need someone to do a job. You're not getting, stop acting like you're getting married. Stop acting like they're they have to be indebted to you and vice versa, <laughs> right? But that's kind of what we've. I want to make sure I want their buy and I want their soul, mm. you know, committed to this and their firstborn. I mean, what the hell? Just have them do a job, right? That should be okay. And I don't care. In what case it. you screw up, you got to cut your pinky off and give it. I mean, to them but just happy. that that's that just level of commitment. I think is really and look. That's a good point. I get I, it. I, if you go on to social media, you'll see, and I, and I mean, you know, LinkedIn or Reddit or, or any, any place that has a large audience and you'll see the vast majority, the, there is an imbalance out there where by default, the employers will look bad to the camps for not doing things like providing, you know, benefits and, and time off, oh. you know, pay for time off and all these things, right? We know that. So, mm -hmm. but, but what we, what, what gets lost in all this, and you and I have talked about, um, I think even recently, is you don't want to be part of that pool. You, you want to, you should be able to like, make it so you can you can decide when you take the time mm -hmm. off, not be, be beholden to your employers in the days that they grant you. Like that's the problem that we're asking the this organization who just needs a job done, right, to provide all these things, and we we shouldn't have them provide all these things. We should we should just have them pay you as much as you can possibly make for the job. And then you take off when you want. Do you think we can ever get there? That's so off where we were, but I, all I'm I, saying Pete, it back to it. If you ever run from president, I want to throw my hat in for the vice presidency because I believe in that. <laughs> I, I def, I'm with you there. I'm definitely with you there because that, you know, so long as you have that, that mutual respect, mutual admiration for being there and for the reason, because you're talking about people who are in the who are in the organization and working there for the right reasons. Right? That's what you're talking about. But you're right. If we start, well, wait a minute, it comes back to HR then. It comes well, back me, to yeah. HR. Well, it partner. does. It does yeah. because we don't we don't. so here's sorry. Yeah. So let's back this up for a sec. <laughs> Vacation policy, right? That's that was a big talk with the the railroad mm -hmm. union recently. That's constantly yep. a, a, a talk, and people from the other countries will will say, "I can't believe that the U.S. doesn't um, provide you know full sick days, you know, pay, and all this stuff." Right? Okay, I get it. But but just think of the relationship that starts off by an employee being granted time off, right, as part of the job, having to ask for it. This is what we have today. I have mm -hmm. to ask for time off. What? Like that? No, that's no, don't work that way. If you worked as a freelancer, then you don't ask for anything. You say, here's where I'm, you know, you communicate, right? Mm -hmm. You let, but, but you're at it, you're operating as peers. You're not operating effectively as indentured servants. And so mm. that relationship. Now, the problem is the employers, you'd say, well, okay. But employers have to get people are going to abuse it, right? And it, well, unfortunately, they would. And, and and the way to avoid someone abusing it is then not put any kind of mandate on the employer to not be able to act. So if a freelancer misbehaves in in the relationship and and you know says they're going to be somewhere and they're not or shows up late, there's no HR process and writing mm -hmm. them up. You just end the relationship. The government's not involved. No one cares. So guess what? Those relationships are healthy. That's right. Because they don't have anyone looking over your shoulder or telling you what's logical and what isn't. It's what adult A agrees to with adult B. And that's it. That's, I, that's dude, all it is. I agree a thousand percent. A thousand percent. Now, can I come back real quick? Because you said something that made my ears perk up. Okay. You, Sorry. That, I don't know even why. I just get so fired up about that. No, me too. No, me too. Because kids, um, I, I, am, I am on the camp of advocating for unlimited PTO. PTO does not really exist, right? And everybody that's told me that employees would take 
would take advantage of it. I asked him, give me an example. In each and every example, I was able to rectify the issue. There was no mass, mass um, um, exodus to take advantage of the org of the organization. So um, it, it's did you have an example? I don't know if the other uh, it's if you've heard of other examples out there of how an employee can possibly take advantage of the uh, unlimited PTO process, because if they do, it's because the leader allowed it. <laughs> OK, That's the only way. Well, yeah. how, wait, well, let me make sure I understand. Mm hmm. The so the obvious one is employees you know, say, all right, great. I'm just not showing up um, for days at a time or weeks at a time. The no, that's that not how well. it works there, Bobby. No, that, that, that's, uh, that's the spirit of not having PTO is if you have to do anything, you could go ahead and do it, but we have to plan it out because your number one priority is still work here. Okay. So it's not, it's unlimited with a catch. It's un, it's it's managed unlimited, limited limited um, managed. Yeah, because you because as a leader, nobody just just because the person has PTO in a bank it doesn't mean they can take time off. the The time off still needs to be scheduled. It still needs to be approved by the leader, and the leader can say yeah or nay. Okay, all right, makes right? sense so, to me. So, so so there's the process for that, right? It's not this wow wow west. People just don't show up. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work that way. Um, I think what employers have to strive for is and feel the need for rather is consistency and something that they can live with. Uh, you know, once they, they, cause that'd be a hard thing to pull back. Right. Once you say unlimited yeah. PTO. Um, and where I always think of it is look, I, the candidates can leave whenever they want mm -hmm. in many States. Employers can't just, you know, send the candidate away whenever they want. So they have to, you have to make sure that you know, the employer is protected there too, right? Well, yeah, but it's just so much easier with everything being unlimited. Nobody has to track anything about who has what. When people leave the organization, you don't have to worry about a financial liability to the employee because of vacation hours they've earned. It's some it's so much an easier process for the for the employer to manage. Yeah, I well. Yeah, I, I guess there's no, I mean, the downside would be, again, as long as, how do you call it? Okay, this is where I'm struggling. This is a misnomer. You can't call it unlimited when manager gets to decide at w whether the days are able to be taken. That That's that's not unlimited PTO. Well, that's, it's that's PTO's that's, limited that's, now, and the manager still gets that to is, decide that. That is false advertising. No, it's not. I mean, yeah. because... Well, hold on. So a manager, so let's say I got 40 hours for PTO. You're my manager. Yep. You still get to decide when I take them. I do. I still have to ask for time off, right? Well, I can't just leave. <laughs> right. Well, that, so it's, it's limited. It's unlimited from the perspective of there isn't an, a number that you earn. How, whenever you're out within a process of you requesting to be off, that time off is going to be paid. That time and off every, is going to be paid. It's going to be paid. And every, but remember, there's a process to request that off. Okay. Now, so the, is there, is uh, you're having to give your managers hard guidelines to follow? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So then it's not back to not being unlimited. You've just got a policy that you're positioning differently. It's no different than the policies now. Which aren't right. That's my point. There's no difference. There's any the difference now, that. which aren't unlimited. No, 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 no. As far as no, it's no different than the policies now. The only difference is nobody tracks the time, and there isn't any financial vi uh, liability when people leave. That's uh, well, the only I mean, difference. any financial liability is self-imposed. Let's let's acknowledge that companies don't have to offer paid you know, un unused vacation. I mean, maybe in some states, but generally in some states you do. Yeah. Well, not in, not here, not not in Florida, and so that doesn't really that bur you know. So I, I guess I just think the alternative to that again, <laughs> this is me being the broken record now, is freelance <laughs> where nobody's asking permission for anything. I agree with that too, <laughs> and and because here's the difference, a major difference is those hours aren't being paid either, right? And because you're going, you can't have the freedom as long as there's a financial tie. And that's that's where I think we may not be looking at it in the same way. Where you're saying, employer, why? What? Explain this. <laughs> Riddle okay. me this, right? This is okay. going to sound 
anti-employee, but it's not it at all because I think the, the the freedom for the employee that comes with being a freelancer trumps any perceived benefit of getting quote paid for time you're not working. But here's my question: okay. Why would an employer want to pay someone to not do the job they're paying them to do? They wouldn't. Okay, but you you've said. I, w- I don't care how long the job takes, right? But if you're the person paying for it, wouldn't you want to pay the minimum for the job that you that you could? All things being equal. So if the job can be done in 20 hours, why should you pay for 40? So what do I value? Time? So I'm well, valuing you, you, time I mean, then? you value, as an employer, you value, I, I would tell you I would want to pay the employees as much as possible, right? While making as you know, serving customers and clients as well as possible, um, while making as much profit as possible. I, I agree. So, but my statement comes from if me as the employer, I'm paying for me to get this product, right? And that product is delivered to my liking. And I feel like I got a good value for what I pay for. I shouldn't care how long it took to produce that product because well, here's what's going to happen. Wait, hold on, I wanna, but, but, but you said you feel like this is not a feel thing. This is a, an objective thing. Okay. Did you overpay for the labor? Because your but competitor see, is not. Those going are two different hats, though, right? So, <laughs> so hear me out. Hear me out. Those are two different hats, right? Because from my perspective, right? If I, a 1099 person, if I say I'm going to pay X amount of dollars for this item, but I need to see an itemized bill from you, right? So that tells that person that I value time over anything else. So I'm penalizing that person from for finishing a really good product early because I value time. So I and, and I we well I want to pay them as much as I I can for their time, but I don't want to pay them for the time that they're not spent on the thing that I need. That to me is where I get I that. We're, we're talking yeah, a little bit differently, I, yeah, right? Yeah, I get that. Where I'd rather you say, "Hey, I'm going to charge a premium because my time is valuable, to, and 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 I want to have the best um, that I can for the whatever, you know, as much as I can afford for that or whatever, right? But where I, I it gets blurry is when you then have to say, "Well, now I want you to pay me for time I'm not working." That skews everything. Once that comes into the mix. Like now I want you to pay me when I'm not doing the service or job or producing the product that you need me to produce as a business. That's where that tie comes in, in a level that I think makes it unhealthy because a business has to then say, okay, Ricky, I could have paid you a hundred dollars an hour for 20 hours, but since I have to pay you for 40 hours and give you time off, then I'm going to have to keep some of that. I'm going to hold that money back. I guess I still only yeah. am going to ultimately pay the same amount. It's just how I position it to you versus, Hey, Ricky, you can make 20, um, work 20 hours for me at a hundred dollars an hour. And it's up to you how you spend the other 20 hours. I'm using the example of you as an employee mm-hmm. wanting to work a 40 hour week, because mm-hmm. you could say, well, 20 hours at a hundred dollars an hour is enough. I'm only going to work 20 hours a week. <laughs> That's a win for you. Why should I require you to stay another 20 hours? You're going to say I shouldn't right? Correct. Okay. So what if you as the employees go, well, I want to work more than 20 hours and I want to be paid another $20 or another a hundred dollars an hour for another 20 hours. Shouldn't you have the opportunity to do that? Well, you can't in the situation where you're beholden to me because of this relationship that, that dictates, I have to pay you when you're not working and you have to work a certain number of hours for me. And it's just, it's just, and, it's, and- so we're married. So, we're back to being married. So real quick, real quick, real quick for the HR professionals that are currently banging their head against the wall. Yes. Pete and I thoroughly understand that we're not talking about hourly associates, right? Forget the FLSA, forget hourly versus exempt and everything. So that it's, we get it. Cause I know people are going to are listening to like, Whoa, Ricky. Well, how that, are you not talking no, about FLSA? But, right? Yeah. I mean, right. No, we understand the laws as they exist. And my problem is that the laws exist. So because I, I think it yeah. makes the unnatural <laughs> come into play. So what I'm saying is I I like the relations. I like to have a relationship that's that that's the same as a 1099 employee. 
or wow, wow what an oxymoron, a 1099 con contractor, right? Because a 1099 contractor, you say, here's what I want. I want you to bill this for me. How much are you going to charge me? Boom, here you go. And if I see that this, this wood structure that he's building for me, he or she is building for me, it's worth the amount of money I paid. I don't care how long it takes. Got it. No, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, now it's different. Now you're not talking hourly. You're saying I'm going to pay you know, $100 uh, to you to do this job, whether it takes you an hour or 50. That's up to you since you quoted me on this, right? Yeah. That, yeah. It's just, it, it's as long as well, you told me you was going to have it done by this day. Boom. Here's the deal. Thank you. I don't can care. That, how, can that work? Do you think that can work in the traditional setting? Can you, do you think that that makes sense? I don't. I, I don't. I think that that, Scenario you just described is perfect for freelance. Um, I don't think it works in the corporate world. I th I think it, it it's it's not going to work for every job. It will work not, for not in some. the corporate world. Yeah. I don't think it works in the W two employee scenario. I get it. Yeah, and and it's it's some jobs again. You it it will work for some. It will not. It's so we get that. I and I think fifty percent is really conservative number to that. <laughs> But, I think but, it's more than but that. So we'll end <laughs> my last thought on it and then we'll be done with it. Cause we, no, because we you haven't given us yours. I know you I will. But my uh, last thought on this is don't be fooled as an employee by thinking things like unlimited PTO work in your favor. That That's all. That's really my message because the second the employer has to start paying you for what you're not doing takes means they're paying you less for what you are doing there. There's my, profound not so profound but definitive to way be of continued <laughs> to be okay. that, that's you, a whole nother episode you want to challenge that <laughs> oh yeah okay I do. all I right do. so the statement again is by them your employer paying you um for what you're not doing means they're paying you less for what you are doing there yeah tomato tomato all right all right, all right. so <laughs> the, my my my, my my thing that I hope will go away, <laughs> yeah. and now that we've gone, you know, we've sort of talked all around it, is is quiet quitting. And I thought it was gone. I hope it will, it will be gone. But the um, the morning brew, uh, which is a massive email mm -hmm. list uh, that comes out every day, or newsletter, um, uh, the subject today was quitting quietly, and they said that quiet quitting is a, a phrase of 2022. And I think they're probably right, but mm -hmm. yikes! I think that is, um, man, we're still <laughs> we're still talking about it. We are, we are, and 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 let me um for anybody listening who who you know who 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 works and is is a candidate looking for a job. Let me tell you, um, it's this whole quiet quitting concept may look and feel like that's the justifiable thing to do right now. It's not. It's not. It it literally is is a self inflicting gush on wood. So I talked about this on TikTok a little bit. Are you familiar with Napoleon Hill? No. Napoleon Hill is a um is a guy who wrote a book called Think and Grow Rich. It was published in 1937, and he was a young journalist who interviewed Andrew oh, Carnegie, who was yeah. the richest person in the world at the time. And he um uh, for whatever reason, Carnegie really liked him as the story goes and said, Hey, let me take you under my wing and I will share all my secrets of success with you. Mm. And you can write about it and publish it. And he did. And so along the way, um, uh, Napoleon Hill wrote his, um, ladders of success. And so one of those ladders are things like, you know, be enthusiastic and have purpose and, you know, be, um, you know, very focused in what you do and self-discipline. So all the things when you, you go, okay, yeah, that's pretty easy to associate those things with success, right? <laughs> Self-control and take action, be imaginative, right? So it's mm -hmm. just ladder of success. And it's infamous. I mean, this thing still ranks as a, one of the all-time um, you know, best self-help books. So, I know the book. I actually didn't know the author. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's Napoleon Hill. Well, one of the things that he wrote um, on his ladder of success, which I found really interesting uh, last week when I was talking about it was, um, go above and beyond, or, or I think he actually phrased it as do more than you're paid for. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. Like, how does that fit in with what's going on? So I put, I actually <laughs> mentioned on TikTok, and I'm wait, waiting to see, because I, this is a, this is a, this is a dialogue that needs to happen where the people who are operating that way 
need to acknowledge that it's going to work against them. And like, you can do it (laughs) and then you can even be justified and do it, but it's not going to lead you to a better place. And that means, I mean, all of this, we talk about even things that seem to be, I'm going to say against, because I just, it's not against, but I I worry it could be perceived. I don't worry. I I think it could be perceived that way to be anti-employee. No, no, no. It's anti (laughs) bad, unhealthy situation. That's right. That, no, Pete, it, it's here's here is you you should not do it. I agree, but here's what I say: if that message goes out, that people say, "Look, do more than one suspected." If people push back on that, that's fine. Those are not the people that that message is not for them, right? <laughs> it's not for them, and that's perfectly okay because the right people will take that message. The right people will do just that. And guess who's going to get promoted? Not not the quiet quitters. It's the people who did more than what was expected of them. Now, folks, if you're out there thinking right now, Ricky, that is that is, that you're you're full of BS. That's that that's fine. It's okay. Two plus two is still equaling four, regardless how you chop that up. That's right. So this is what's happening. Regardless, it's up to you whether you want to be on that train or not. So you look, at, <laughs> sorry, I, I hope, no, I'm glad you said, so I hope it goes away. We're a hundred percent agreement on this. Absolutely. <laughs> do you think, do you think it will, do you think this is, this is here to stay is, or is it just like, Hey, the, these things become trendy and they talk about on LinkedIn a lot. And now here's, what's going to happen. It, it's a, it's a, they're going to start to see that that path is not leading them to a position that they want. And they're going to see that the other folks who took that advice are getting those positions. They're going to complain. That's fine. The people who don't get it, but they're going to see the fruits of those labors. And, and, and I don't think that's going to last very long. It's not. Yeah. No, I hope yeah. not. Well, I don't, I don't know. I, I think it might for a while. Yeah. I think the uh, potential recession could, could affect that, you know, mm. of, 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 downsizing continuing i don't know hopefully that won't but yeah. the two things that i'm going into the year really trying to figure out like these are my uh, big objectives um at a micro level of figuring out how to continue to perpetuate the message of freelance why not being dependent on your employer for more than just paying for the for your you know, the value of your time like that's something that i i need to work on and you can help me because even you're not, I don't have you on the same page with me yet as necessarily with mm-hmm. this. Um, of on freelancing? Well, just, just on. I agree with it. A thousand percent. I know you agree with the freelance, but. The concept of employers not. You know, taking benefits out of the equation to put money back in the the pockets of the employees all of those things like i don't know if you're fully there yet are you as long as as long as it's as it's understood and it's not it's not done in haste to steal from the from the employee (laughs) then yeah i'm okay with it i'm not look so maybe i misunderstood that right right because maybe i was under the impression that because you know how some organizations they cut benefits but nothing else, right? They're still getting the same output from the employee. That's not what you're saying, right? I'm you're saying, saying don't, yeah, I'm saying separate them entirely, right? Not and, offer them in the first place. In exchange to more pay? Yes. Yeah, I'm perfectly yeah. okay yeah, well, with that. Well, again, not, not, I'm perfectly you know, not, okay with that. Not, yeah. yeah, it was so, so back to, and I guess where the reason I, I made the company or not fully on board is that. What that means is make you know time off too, right? Not having the employer responsible for paying for time. I get it. Yeah. Where that should be something that would benefit as because I believe that would benefit the employees, the workforce more than the employers. Because I think I think it's just employers are somewhat if they're pay, if they're paying you to not work, they could have paid you more. That's all. I mean, <laughs> I I know I just said look. It again. Oh. All I care about, all I care about is for whatever the employer. So you know what? Forget it. Whatever entity A agrees with entity B. And as long as those two understandings, that one, excuse me, those understandings are followed and they're honored. I don't care for the government to get involved. I don't well, care for the anybody problem. to Entity get involved. Entity C <laughs> looms over all yeah. of the above. No, I get it. Right? I, I, I'm perfectly in, in, okay with both entities doing their own thing. Entity G, you know, big G. 
for, for government. And, and, and that's, you know, that that's so like money that, that's, that's something I'm going to, I'm going to try to figure out how to articulate better. Cause I don't think I, I think I don't do a good enough job of it today. And then the other one is to try to convince all the people who think quiet quitting is to their benefit to convince them that it's not. Yeah. That's a, yeah. You have it, any it, goals? It's... Those are my goals. Those are my, those are, those are two things I'm going to work for that. I'm not, I don't know how successful I can be, but I'm going to spend a lot of time trying this year. I need a goal, don't I? I don't know. I need a goal for next year. Well, I mean, you know, I, I, I have a goal. Obviously the goal is to grow, to grow the business. I'm looking to get about 15 more clients on okay. and grow my payroll. So absolutely. Or my 1099 output. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's my goal. But um, from the other side of it, from an HR perspective, here's my goal. Honestly, my goal next year is to expose the idea of breaking the mold from whatever business worked before how I worked be before I, my goal is to expose how much different things can be, can, can be done, how these new clients, how they can handle things differently. What worked 10 years ago is not necessarily going to work right now. And let's, uh, let's be risky enough to, uh, to do a couple of things together and have fun with it. That's my goal for next year. Perfect. Well, we're on the Look same page then, I think for, <laughs> for, a, you know, with a couple of different ideas on how um, everyone's situation can improve, right? Because you want to see things get better for, for, employers and companies yeah. as do I and for employees. And I think where both can benefit is where you can have a healthy relationship, right? right. And we do need to shift some things. So that's what we'll, we'll, I think we'll be talking more about that. In oh, yes, sir. You, you, folks, just wait. All right. Well, that's it. Three wishes, six wishes. Let's see what happens this time next year. All right. Have a good one, folks. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year, Ricky. Goodbye. You too. Bye.